Who wants to be the next to discover how to stop drinking without willpower? Visit StopDrinkingExpert.com and grab your free place on today's coaching session. Hi there, this is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Welcome to London, England. I don't want to be here, uh, but I had to come for a couple of days. Um, my plan is to get in and get out as quickly as possible and hopefully stay safe and avoid this coronavirus, which is rampaging over the, the UK at the moment and around the world, of course. Um, but I thought I'd make a video while I was here because I'm seeing a recurring theme on social media. Uh, and it's, it's kind of along the lines of people getting upset with me because I criticize alcohol. <laughs> um, whenever I post something, I get a bunch of people commenting and they're on varying levels of intelligence. Some of them are just grunting caveman, swearing at me. How dare I insult alcohol? Uh, some people say things like, uh, you know, as long as you moderate it, alcohol is a perfectly fine thing. It's a nice thing in life. It has a benefit. Um, as long as you control it, it's fine. As long as you respect it, it's fine. Some people say one glass of alcohol a day is good for you. How dare you come up here saying it's not. Other people uh, say that I'm spoiling their fun. You know, they say, well, we have to wear a mask these days. We can't socialize. We can't go to sporting events. And now you want to come along and take alcohol off us as well. No. So many points to make. The first point is, you know, if you get so upset because somebody criticized something you like to drink, surely that should be the first point where you question your relationship with it. Because if you change the substance, I mean, imagine if I posted on social media that I think mashed potatoes are horrible. I mean, you might get a few people you know, jokingly replying, saying, oh my, you've never had them like I make them, oh, they're fantastic, that sort of thing. But can you imagine anyone getting really angry with me, swearing at me, say, telling me that, you know, how dare I come up with these sort of comments, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't see it, can you? Why is that? Because people don't get addicted to mashed potatoes. You can like them, and maybe you could have them every day for a week, but then you can go, oh, you know what, I've had enough of that, and you leave it. But with alcohol, it's different, isn't it? People tell themselves they drink it because they like it, but that's a lie. They drink it because the evil clown that lives in their head tells them that. So if you're getting so upset because I criticize something that you drink, surely that is the first point where you go, hmm, maybe my relationship with this thing is not normal anymore. Now, the second point to make this, this whole, you know, um, concept that I'm spoiling people's fun by saying stop drinking alcohol is based on the assumption, the flawed assumption, of course, that alcohol is nothing but a harmless social pleasantry. And that's not true. It is more dangerous than any other drug you can think of. Heroin, cocaine, nicotine, cigarette smoking, all of them. And let me tell you why. Because, first, because of the availability, because it's, it's peddled by the government, it's allowed to be sold. And so there is this false illusion that it is therefore safe and it is accessible. You know, today, if I wanted to, I could go to a shop within five, 10 minutes and buy alcohol. If I wanted to buy heroin, I wouldn't know where to start. I wouldn't have the first clue how you get heroin. So that's, that's the first thing. And that's why, Three million people every year are killed by this drug. It's, that's like degrees of, a massive degrees of difference between the number of people killed by heroin. And you can argue, well, that's because less people use heroin. Yes, but it doesn't really matter, does it? We're talking about the damage something is doing to society and alcohol is the big one. And the reason for that, the dangers of alcohol are multi-level because, you know, we can, Talk about the health dangers if you want, but everyone knows this. You know, you know if you drink, you increase your risk of cancer, you increase your risk of having uh, significant organ damage, especially the liver. If you carry on drinking and your liver gets into cirrhosis, you're dead. Now, some people say, well, you know, surely if you got to that point, you'd, you'd try and get a transplant or something. But you, you're killed by the maths even before you, you start because there are tens of thousands of people waiting for a new liver. And because 
because it's supply and demand, because there are so many more people wanting a liver organ than there are organs available, they place a criteria on who gets one. And if you've damaged your liver by drinking, they say to you, well, okay, you can't even apply, you can't even be considered for a liver until you've been sober for six months. Okay, sounds reasonable. But if you've got end stage liver failure, you ain't gonna last six months. You're gonna be dead. So at the point where you find out that you've got end stage liver cirrhosis, it's game over, that's it, you're dead. And we can go on about the health dangers, but I don't think it's all that helpful because everyone knows them and you can't convince people to quit drinking by just badgering them about health problems. It doesn't work. That's why the, you know, those pictures they put on cigarette packets of diseased lungs really don't have a dramatic impact because everyone looks at them and either ignores them or assumes it'll happen to someone else. But with alcohol, the dangers, like I said, are multi-layered because it affects all areas of your life. You know, the first thing is, this is not just drug use to change your state. This is drug use that affects the way you think and the way you behave. It effectively changes your personality. So if you get a drinking problem, it changes who you are as a person. It means that it affects your work, it affects your career, because you change. You are no longer consistently performing. You are hit and miss and you're low energy and you're low ideas person because you're constantly thinking about where you're getting your next drink or you're either that or intoxicated. It affects your ability to think. Alcohol is a mild anesthetic. It basically turns off parts of the brain, which means that you make very poor decisions, very poor choices. This makes you a bad parent often, because when you're a parent, you not only have to make important decisions for yourself, but you also have to make important decisions for people who rely on you. And drunks don't make good decisions. Drunks don't make good parents. It's as harsh as that. It also affects your relationships because you essentially become a different person than your husband or wife married. You're different. You're now a walking zombie. You don't have your sense of humor that you had before. You don't have your intelligence. You don't have this, you don't have that. You are a different person and in no way are you a better person. So it affects your career, it affects your ability to parent, it affects your mental capacity. So if you're running your own business, that is gonna suffer, it affects your relationships. And of course it affects your health, but it affects everything, even your finances as well, because you know governments, their, their only really tool they have to limit what they consider to be bad is taxation. And so increasingly alcohol is being taxed more and more and more, it's becoming more and more expensive to drink the stuff. And yet our mentality around this drug is changing. This is no longer something we go out to consume. You know, go back 20, 30 years, if you wanted to drink alcohol, you pretty much had to go to a pub or a bar and sit there drinking. That's not how we do it anymore. We buy it in the supermarket in bulk and we lie to ourselves and say that bottle of vodka is gonna last two weeks we take it home and we pour measures that in a pub or a bar would be probably 10 times the normal amount. And this is becoming normal. Anyone noticed the size measure of whiskey is, that is poured in a TV show? Firstly, have you noticed that all the kind of gritty, hard characters in TV shows drink neat whiskey? No ice, just neat whiskey. And have you seen the size of the measure? I mean, you know, a pub measure of whiskey is like this much in a glass, isn't it? It's a sliver. In these TV shows, it's basically, it's like a quarter of a pint of whiskey is, is what they pour and they drink it like it's Coca-Cola. It's, it's crazy. But that's the mentality these days. So look, um, to the people out there who get very upset with me, I want to make a few points. Look, I'm not telling you to stop drinking. I'm not telling anybody to stop drinking. Uh, and people have this kind of assumption that I want to see alcohol banned. I don't. I, I, there, you know, there are lots of dangerous things out there that are not banned. And we tried banning alcohol, it didn't really work, did it? Look, if you are one of those people who can have a, a 
glass of wine every now and again, like my wife. My wife, she, I guess she has like four glasses of wine a year. That's it. Very, very, very rarely she'll say, oh, I fancy a glass of wine, she'll have one, and that'll be it. Three months will go by and she won't have another one. If you're one of those goody two-shoes, and I wish I was one of them, then fantastic, great, carry on doing what you're doing. But if drinking is making you miserable, if every morning you're waking up feeling guilty and full of regret because yet again you drank last night and you promised yourself you wouldn't, then do something. Don't keep defending this substance. Don't get angry at people like me. You're getting angry at the wrong person. That was my life for 10 years. Every morning I'd wake up and say, right, that's it. I feel terrible. I drank two bottles of wine again last night. Tonight I'm not drinking. That is how every day started for me. That's it, I'm never drinking again. For 10 years. You can carry on in that loop for the rest of your life. Or you can start to change your thinking. You've got to change the way you look at alcohol. Stop seeing it as a pleasantry. Because as long as you see a benefit in that stuff, you're always going to feel like you're missing out if you're not drinking it. So back, you know, when I was in that loop, that 10 year loop, I'd say to myself, I'm never drinking again. And yet I still wanted all the things I assumed were beneficial with alcohol. And so I'd go maybe a week, two weeks sometimes without drinking. And I'd start to feel like I was depriving myself. I'd feel like I was missing out on the good stuff in life. And you can't live in that state. Because as, as long as you stay in that painful situation of feeling deprived, you're always going to want to go back. The secret is to change what it means to you, to change your belief structure so that you never want to go back to that poison that you used to drink. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please ask. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you are worried about your drinking, get over to the website now, stopdrinkingexpert.com and sign up for today's free quit drinking webinar. And it's the only drug on planet Earth that when you get a problem with it, they blame you and not the drug. That doesn't happen with any other substance. If you think about it, cigarettes, you tell someone you're addicted to cigarettes, they don't go, oh, you dirty smokeaholic. You're broken, weak-willed smokeaholic. You're going to be a smokeaholic for the rest of your life. They don't, they don't do that. They don't give you that label and say, well, that's it. You're broken forever now. I really consider this because it's different. It's, it's different to anything you can find out there. And it's, it gives you real mental freedom from the clutches of alcohol. I, I had an email about ooh, six months ago from a lady. She said, I was thinking about joining your course, but then I've just seen that red wine is good for your heart. How do you defend against that, Mr. Stop Drinking Expert? <laughs> yeah, said, it must be true. And I said, well, the, the defense against it is it's not true. And that's the biggest defense you can always have.